I swear to God, this whole playthrough is just you bullying the shit out of me. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Who knew rolling dice could be so fun? Woo! I'm alive. What? Hi, I'm Mandy, and you can call me Mandy. Welcome to my little series called Master or Disaster Piece, where I share the most memorable games I come across. They can either be really good or really bad. Whatever it is that makes this game special, I'm here to tell you all about it. Oh my god. <laughs> what a throw. I just love the, like, just pools of blood that show up after that. Oh my god, we just changed! Can I just say, I love this game. The only reason I haven't plowed through all of it yet is because time is limited and I'm playing it with a friend. I liked it so much that you'll have to live with me having forgotten to record the first time I ever played this game. It's okay, it's okay, because I've got clips, all right? Don't worry, this isn't a montage. Or is it? Oh my god. Oh, that was good. Where's the big one? The big one's like all the way back there, right? Oh, what the fuck? Right, first things first, it looks amazing. Like, I know we're in the modern age and stuff, and video games are at a point where you can't see a single sharp edge, repeated texture, or pixelated shadow anymore, but even so, even by today's standards, this game looks really, really good. That's a really detailed model, Jesus Christ. The combat. Quick disclaimer, I haven't played Baldur's Gate 1, or 2, or any other D&D inspired franchise, but I'm willing to fix that in the near future. The combat in this game is as good as I think rolling dice with some tactics gets. It's not like you're playing Morrowind and praying to Vivek for a good roll on your axe to hit the rat that is constantly biting you in the toe. As much as I thought I wouldn't enjoy this game because it's just RNG or whatever, I ended up loving it. I got asked to play it with a friend and he said, have you ever played D&D before? And I replied, I know that there is a die, and I know that you roll it. That is all of my knowledge. And then there's like a dungeon master, I thought. But I didn't question it further because I don't kink shame. Right, needless to say, I was willing to give it a go. And oh, am I glad I did. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, how, how, how? No way! What? No way! They all missed! Shit. Oh! Yikes. Yeah, yeah. She hits you for 4 and me for 23. I've had enough of you. Oh my god! Quick intervention. I'm still building this humbly small channel, so if you notice you like the video, please give it a little like and a comment. More on how you could help me grow at the end. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. You just throw them off. Yes. 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 Good. The characters. The origin characters include, but are not limited to, Anakin before he gets violently thrown in lava, Dracula but written by a woman, shut up feisty orc bitch, edgy emo everybody's crush, I don't know only briefly met him, King Gizzard of the evil lizard wizards, and oh my god I would go to hell for you. I played through act one with my custom character who's a paladin, my buddy's character whom you should definitely not mention Azora to, and mostly Astarion, Gale, Shadowheart, and Karlak. Most of them you can fuck. Gale even tries to riz you multiple times, but he's not that good at it, and if you ever reject Astarion, my god will his ego be hurt. The voice lines. Oh my god, the voice. There are so, so many voice lines. Every single dialogue has, on average, about three or four choices and corresponding responses. No wonder they made the protagonist silent, which is a shame, but despite that, there is a lot of character depth with the choices you take, it's just that your lines aren't acted out. Which makes sense, considering you could play as any of the origin characters, so it wouldn't have been just thousands of voice lines once, but about a dozen times more than that, considering player voice and origin character choices. Right. Focusing on the lines that are in fact acted out, they're phenomenal. Every character feels deliberate and is able to portray their personality extremely well. At least I think so, I don't know, I'm not a voice actor, just a 20 year old who wishes he was Go. one. <laughs> we can talk when you get me out of here. And I can't help but mention how fucking many voice lines there are. Have a look at this situation where you meet someone who's falsely afraid of you and threatens to blow you up with the barrel that sits next to them. If you would have been playing by yourself, there's probably no way you could have done this. Hold it! 
One more step, and a blow is to Trump's. I'd like to point out that blowing oneself up is never the solution. Shut your mouth, Hoon, or I'll shut you down. <laughs> I stole her room out her barrel and ran off. <laughs> <laughs> you stole the barrel? She's threatening to blow everyone up right now. She doesn't even have the barrel on her. <laughs> Try me. Is there no barrel? I know what you are. <laughs> There's no Say barrel. Right What's she gonna do? Dying. Do it. Blow us up. Let it be done. Wait. <laughs> what the hell? Wow. No way. No way they planned for this. Bugger it all. You moved them. Go on. What? Dude, that's. Don't I didn't even know that. That's stop. awesome. Oh my fucking god. No way. Jesus, that's two thousand five hundred gold. Yeah. Also, that was like four or five voice lines that they just had for that. Like, anyway, the story. I mean, how do you write a story that can have a player character so different, so diverse, and take such vastly different courses, yet still play out the same? Side note. As I'm writing this, I haven't actually finished the story yet. This is just my take on Act One. But let me tell you, Act One has been amazing. I was never quite sure which of the quest lines was the main story, because the main story is, you know, you've got a thing stuck in your head, and you need to get it out. The story of this game is not linear at all. It's waved, it's circular, it's quadratic, it's whatever the fuck you want it to be. Kiss my ass, then. This lord of murder likes doing his own dirty work. To get back to the question I posed, I think they did a really good job with it. There's a universal sense of impending doom. No matter your character choices, no matter your personality, you just want to get the thing out of your head so you can be normal again, at least up until now. Even if the story now branches, it's a brilliant first motivator for everyone. You as the player want to keep your character alive, you want to keep playing. It very much reminds me of Cyberpunk and having Johnny stuck in your head. Another brilliant game, so being compared to that in this aspect is very much a compliment. There are many, many things in place in terms of quality of life. Characters level up retroactively, like Mass Effect, so you can just take whomever you want on a mission and swap them out without losing the other character's leveling progress. This is a brilliant system, and I wish more games did it this way. You can respec your character and change all of their abilities for the lowly sum of 100 gold. This means you aren't locked into playing a certain way once you've chosen your playstyle and can experiment and fiddle around all you want. Again, this is brilliant. I mean, what goes against having the system in place? With this, there's no need for me to go on the wiki and try to figure out a way to min-max my character when I can literally just try, and if the build sucks, I just rebuild it. Same goes for character appearance, but that one's free. It just bugs out the menu sometimes. Oh, I don't know. I just want to get out of the character creator! <laughs> can you please let me leave her? Now I know this might be controversial to some people, but I love being able to quick save whenever. <coughs> there are auto saves, and you can choose to not use the quick saves if it feels scummy to you. But god damn it, use it if you need and don't want to lose progress. My take should not be surprising to any of you though when you find out I've played Skyrim for more than 700 hours. Another thing, you can assign abilities to quick slots in your custom bar. This is good. I just wish it was explained somewhere because I hadn't noticed it before about 20 hours in. A lot of this game, now that I look back, is unexplained and presented loosely throughout tooltips. I think I'm quite privileged to be playing with someone who's already played the game and can offer a guiding hand and tell me what something does or doesn't do because I would not have figured out everything on my own. This is a design flaw. There should be a built-in and non-intrusive way for you to learn the various systems without having to ask around or look them up. The multiplayer itself works great. You can start a playthrough and every present online player can choose an origin character or make a custom one. Once the characters are created and chosen, you can assign them at any time from the menu. This is a really, really nice touch. It means I'm not locked into playing with my buddy in case he suddenly ghosts me on this game. I probably have a higher opinion of this game than the average because I had someone to guide me through the game and overcome my lack of knowledge to anything D&D related. If you have the same luck as I do, or if you already are familiar, then this game is just absolutely brilliant. Just fucking play it. If you made it this far into the video, may the absolute bless you and thanks. If you like what you saw, you could subscribe if you haven't. If you didn't like something about this video, please let me know in the comments. I am very receptive of constructive criticism. All right, that was my opinion of the game. If you want to see just how much fun I had with this game, then here are the rest of the clips from my playthrough of Act 1. 
question, kill, then move on. I reckon those warriors holding the bridge can be fought off. He doesn't look very, uh, confident. <laughs> what? 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 Oh, what? Wait, what? 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 He doesn't need more help. You're good. <laughs> You're sure he doesn't need more help? He, uh, looks a little distressed to me. It's, when you examine him, you just see this tiny version of him. <laughs> Why is it open so small? The miniature uh, <laughs> from D and D. Ouch! Beat his ass! Get him! <laughs> <laughs> so funny, seeing Gale fucking melee <laughs> things. Gale fucking tripped him. That was insane. <laughs> how? 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 I'm the king of the, the world. The bedroll doesn't have health. The bedrolls was keeping all this up. Oh. Yeah, there you go. No, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> oh my fucking god. What? Okay, here, fine. Have your bedroll back. I swear to god, this whole playthrough is just you bullying the <laughs> shit out of me. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Why are you throwing me? <laughs> no! You're, you're kidding me. No! I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, I hate him. Oh. You're nuts! Oh, <laughs> I, I can see the outline of a breast tilde. <laughs> it's over, Anakin. What did you just do? Lost in thought. <laughs> I love that voice line. Why is it so goofy? Lost in thought. It slammed them. One of the chandeliers broke and dropped on them. Do you see that? <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Quit whimpering, or I'll take a slice off your whole chest for my supper. Caution is warranted here. Right. Right there. No, no, right there. Up. <laughs> I love this game, dude. 